Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. I'm your host, Tomas Garza. And as always today, I've got some really, really wonderful teachings, lessons from the spiritual text, A Course in Miracles. And I thank all of you for tuning in. It really means a lot to me that this is a global community and that people are worldwide are interested. They're interested in spirituality. They're interested in the truth of who we really are to the point where they'll willingly pick up a big, thick book like A Course in Miracles and read it. Or if that's not what you're doing, that you will willingly go to a yoga studio or you will go willingly sit down and meditate. You will willingly work whatever the work looks like, you will commit, you will commit time to a spiritual practice, whatever that is for you and whatever that looks like. That is inspiring and it's wonderful for me to be here with all of you like-minded people and reaching out to the entire world as teachers and we all are teachers each and every one of us is a teacher, whether we hold ourselves out as teachers or not, because we are exuding our own energy. We're either extending love or we're projecting our fear. And we've talked a little bit here in some of the lives about the difference between the two. And we can actually say some more about that today, if you'd like. It's germane, it fits right in as always with the topic of conversation. So we have, the choice of love or fear, either we're extending love or we're projecting fear. So as we show up in the world, in and what I mean by showing up is in all of our interactions with people, not just online, but in person. And how are you presenting yourself? How are you speaking to other people? How are you carrying yourself? What does your energy tell other people? Yeah, really important is teaching. It really is. If you think about it, it really is teaching whether you are in a classroom setting or an online setting or an instructor type setting or not. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because we're always communicating with each other. We're always interacting with each other. Even if we try to run and wall ourselves off and hide, we're still communicating with each other. And in the end, we will always be communicating with each other. Why? Minds are joined. Oneness and unity. That's why. <laughs> that, that's, that's really it in a nutshell. And A Course in Miracles tells us that. And it says it in a number of different places and a number of different ways. Because as we all know, as adult learners, we need to practice things. We need to hear things many, many times before we finally open up to the energy, in this case, of the Holy Spirit and allow ourselves to wake up. It's about allowing. And so either we're extending love or we're projecting our fear. Why do we say projecting fear and guilt and negative feelings, anxiety, for example? Well, because it doesn't feel good to be afraid, does it? We, we don't like to be afraid, nor do we like to admit that we're afraid. It comes easier at some times for people. And some people are able to do that more readily than others. And whatever that situation looks like for you, none of us wants to feel guilty. None of us wants to feel ashamed or lack or afraid. So what do we do? We try to get that feeling away from us, as far away from us as we can. We project it onto whoever's in our immediate vicinity. Project it to somebody. It could be anybody. It could be your partner, it could be your spouse, it could be your kids, it could be your parents, it could be your neighbor across the street, it could be somebody on the other side of the world. You know, it's really easy for people in today's day and age to demonize one another, isn't it? We see examples of that 
every day. All we have to do is pick up our phone or turn on our computer and look at the news or even look at our own social media feeds. Because if you have 4,800 friends on Facebook, like I do on my personal page, then you know there's going to be all kinds of opinions on there. People believe all kinds of things and people say all kinds of things. So let's leave it at that. Yeah. So either we're extending love or we're projecting fear. Spirituality means acknowledging the fear thoughts, taking ownership of it and letting it go. This is what the practice of forgiveness is. All of these things, when we feel fearful, when we feel anxious, when we feel like we want to lash out at somebody, it is raw material for our own awakening. These are experiences that we're having saying, release me, <laughs> let me go. Right? Don't project this onto somebody, just let it go. Let it be where it is. Enter the practice of forgiveness. It's the same as in sitting meditation when you discover that you're distracted and carried away by your thoughts, you simply let them go neither following after them, nor judging them, nor damning and condemning yourself for having had the thoughts, which you can't help anyway, because mind, the mind is constantly at work. I mean, it's constantly moving. Yeah, it's moving energy. And we just let them go. Forgiveness is one of the central principles of all spirituality. And this ties right in to today's workbook lesson that we're looking at here in the course. And that's lesson 58, which if you're following along is a review of lessons 36 through 40. So lesson 36 reads, my holiness envelops everything I see. We'll be talking about our holiness today. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it's not an honorific like the Dalai Lama is called your holiness, right? Um, your holiness, the Pope. It's not like that. It is who we really are. And of course, it's just a word. If you don't care for the word, nah, that's okay. You don't have to. Here's what it means. My holiness envelops everything I see. In other words, God is. What is your holiness but the extension of God? That, that's it. That, that's what we are. That's what is meant by the Son of God. It's the extension of God. Son of God, by the way, is just a term. It's just a collection of words. Words are symbols. They're not the things that they represent. And the things that the words represent are not what they really are either. Because we have, have heard and we'll learn and we'll learn even more as we go along in the workbook that, well, we're not a body. We're not our thinking mind, right? We're definitely not at the, at the core of it, what we do for earning an income. We're not our careers. We're not our job. We're not our socioeconomic status or gender or ethnicity or nationality or anything like that. These are all labels that we assign to ourselves in the world. When in reality, who we are is not any of that at all. And who we are, our holiness, who we are envelops everything that we see. And we say in A Course in Miracles, God is. Quite simply, reality simply is. And because it is, it envelops everything, literally everything that we see. Lesson 37, my holiness blesses the world. It's beautiful. What does love do? Love blesses the world. Fear condemns it love blesses it. So your holiness, my holiness, same holiness blesses the world. There's nothing my holiness cannot do. Lesson 38. Okay. There's nothing my holiness cannot do. This means that 
we're unlimited, literally unlimited in our power and capacity to heal, period. Heal ourselves, right? First and foremost, our own minds, other minds, they're joined, remember? We're unlimited in our capacity to heal. So what is a miracle? Well, according to A Course in Miracles, a miracle is not being able to look at something or wave your hand like Luke Skywalker and move rocks or boulders. I mean, if that happens for you, great, fantastic. That's really not what's meant in the Course by a miracle. A miracle is a shift, a change, a transformation in our own minds from fear to love. It's choosing love over fear. That is the definition of a miracle. It may seem small in the moment, but a series of these choices brings about transformational impact in your life and the life of everyone around us, the entire planet, everyone. Transformational, it's unlimited. There's nothing that your holiness cannot do. Lesson 39 reads, my holiness is my salvation. Okay, so the course, as you've noticed, uses terms that a someone that is raised in a Judeo-Christian tradition would be very familiar with, like Holy Spirit, um, God, Jesus, salvation. Now, it's not what is commonly proffered as salvation in conventional religion especially fundamentalist religious groups, um, you know, many of you have had experience with those and, and, you know, it touches a lot of aspects of people's lives. So, uh, including mine, I was raised in a fundamentalist church. So to me, salvation growing up was, was not something that it means in the Course in Miracles. This is totally different, totally different. Salvation is, is, sal is, is salvation from, from guilt, from fear-based thoughts. Who brings that about? We do, right? We don't have to wait until the physical body passes away to experience salvation. It's ours for the choosing right now, right now, right here. And your holiness, who you really are and is in fact your salvation, God is. Now, God is not some being that is outside of you. Now, this is something that I was taught growing up in a fundamentalist Christian church. We had this notion that God was a fundamental being in the sky, male, of course, with a beard, um, who would, and white, by the way, who would strike us dead yeah, if we transgressed. I laugh about it now, but it wasn't so funny to me as a kid. In fact, it was scary. It was scary. It was a way of instilling fear, the fear of God. How could one fear complete and total love and hold that out as a badge of honor? Because this is in today's day and age in a lot of societies around the world, a cultural badge of honor to, isn't it, to call yourself God fearing. Well, I never resonated with that. Now, if you do, great, that's absolutely fine. I didn't. And what A Course in Miracles says about that is that the fear of God is actually an obstacle to experiencing peace. Why? It's not love. It's the opposite of love. It's fear is the exact opposite of what you should be doing. If you wish, of course, if you wish, and it's your wish, you have free will. If you wish to experience peace, then fear-based thoughts are not the way to get you there. In fact, they lead you to exactly the opposite place, a place that the Course in Miracles uh, refers to as chaos, right? Confusion, it's the way the world operates. 
I mean, if it looks ordered, fantastic, wait five minutes, right? It's not going to seem so ordered. Everything comes and goes. It's cyclical. One minute you're up, the next minute you're, you're down. One minute you feel great. The next minute you feel completely unworthy and it just zigzags and yo-yos back and forth. It's exhausting. Now, yeah, it's exhausting. And in fact, the course refers to this state, this experience as hell. So it refers to hell not as a place where you burn and fry forever and ever, but as a place where you experience separation, which is hell. And we don't need to experience that. Deep down, none of us wants to experience that. This is why we're here on Enlightened World Network. This is why you are curious about spirituality. It's why I'm curious about spirituality. It's why it's the central component of my life, including my professional life. So you could do something else completely different in the world, but whatever you are doing, you're interested in the question, who am I really? And this is good, keep asking. All right, lesson 40, I'm blessed as a son of God. So we just said a couple of minutes ago, son of God's just a phrase. It's just a term in language that we use to communicate with each other. Meaning of this is the extension of God. Love, God, extends itself. You want to say himself or herself, great, whatever, doesn't matter. Love extends itself. What else would it extend? Because love and fear are incompatible. So if you're thinking fear thoughts, you're not going to be thinking loving thoughts in that moment. And the present moment is all we have. So what we see in our lives is a mix, isn't it? It's a hodgepodge. It's a conglomeration of fear-based thoughts and loving thoughts. And that's why we yo-yo back and forth between joyous experiences and misery. Joy, misery, joy, misery, happy, sad, and on and on and on until we get sick of it. And if you're sick of it, good, good, good. This is the right place to be, honestly, because this is where spiritual inquiry comes from. It's the wish to experience something else that you know is here. It's not out there, it's here internally. And it's formulating that wish. So let's see who's hopped on the live stream today. I'd like to take a minute and say hello to all of you. And, you know, this is really fun because I get to take a look at some of your comments and, and questions here on the live stream. And again, if you're catching this on the replay, feel welcome to let me know if you have any questions, whether it's about today's topic, whether it's about A Course in Miracles, or whether it's about spirituality in general. Whatever that looks like for you, and uh, see if I bring this up. And it looks like we do have a few people joining us today. So welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we've got Stephanie and Carol Ann. Hello. Yes. Yeah. And so what I aim to do here on these, these live streams is, is just talk about the lessons from my perspective. One of the beauties of A Course in Miracles is it lends itself to community. It does that on purpose. It really does. It does this on purpose. Now, of course, it's true that each of us, moment to moment, is responsible for choosing love or fear. We're responsible for our own choices. Luckily, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. And with that free will, with that responsibility, comes a... a the need to, to make decisions again and again and again in favor of love. And the more you do that, the better. And A Course in Miracles lends itself to community why minds are joined. And there are a number of groups in person, which we'll hopefully get back to after this pandemic is over, and online, where there are communities of people that come together and discuss. I've participated in some, I've led some. And 
you know, this is my aim here is to reach as many people as possible in as many different places as possible and, and give my feedback, my take, my experience on these teachings. What I aim to do is take these concepts, which can seem kind of out there uh, or unfamiliar to people, maybe esoteric, and recast them in a, uh, a more actionable light. That's my word, actionable, because this gives us something to do. A Course in Miracles is wonderful because it gives us something to do. We don't have to just believe something until the physical body no longer serves us and we leave it. We don't have to wait. We can act right now. Why? Because now is all, literally all we have. So yes, and, and Stephanie, Green Valley, Arizona. Well, welcome. I'm in Phoenix. Very cool. All right. Yeah, Arizona. And, and we've had all kinds of people from all over the world. Uh, we've had people tuning in from Romania, Australia, New Zealand, England, um, a couple of people fr from England and the US and Canada, South America. So this is beautiful. Yes, thank you all for tuning in. And um, if you're just catching this for the first time, or you've only caught this one or two times, this is in fact a daily live stream. So I would have you check the show guide in Enlightened World Network's Facebook page every day. It lists the, the timing of the programming. This show is at different times every day. Most of them, because of my own schedule, are going to be in the morning Mountain Standard Time, but not all of them. So um, definitely check the show guide because the timing does bounce around. So Yes, thank you all for tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments about a course or universal spiritual principles in general, I'm happy to discuss them with you. And I will see you all back here tomorrow. So thank you so much for tuning in. This has been A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love.